Coach, was last night's game and the end result, maybe the way you played, um, did it leave you guys wanting to get into action almost right away? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we look at it. Um, we had nine grade A chances. Uh, Timmy alone had three breakaways. Um, you know, we just we didn't capitalize on, on what we should have capitalized on. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a 2-1 game, really, with a couple empty netters. I think we deserve a better fate, but um, just put your head down and go again. A couple of fellows after the game last night said <clears throat> maybe there was too much try. You almost tried to do too much. How does a coach get that out of a player's mentality? <clears throat> that is the fear going in, um, and that's why you, you morning skate, you try and get some of those nerves out. But it was clear. Guys were trying too hard, and sometimes when you want it too much, you, you tend to be a little more fatigued. You tend to be mentally tired. Um, I think we just got to settle into the to the regular season here and get playing the way we can. But, um, you know, outside of the power play, which has been our strongest uh, thing throughout uh, exhibition, I thought there was a lot of really good things. What didn't you see on that power play last night? <clears throat> just weren't sharp. Um, entries, um, the conviction of it. It's almost like... We wanted the end result without doing what we've been doing. And we didn't just take what was there. Um, we were kind of forcing them. We just we just didn't go with the flow. And these are good players, and, and you can't be robotic. And you got to give them the, the opportunity to make plays. And they got to feel that way, that take what's given to them. And, and they're going to score lots of goals. I mean, that's one game. but um, And they'll get hot, and I think we'll go through stretches where the puck goes in a lot. Uh, <clears throat> is the strength of the Leafs the perfect team to face next? <clears throat> well, I would say um, in the Atlantic uh, you know, in, or in the Eastern Conference, I'd say they're the favorites at this point. Um, they play the right way. They check. They play with lots of structure. They can score. Um, they're ready to win right now. So, um, you know, if you're going to beat them, you're going to have to be at your best. And I think that's absolutely, absolutely what we need. You, it's only you've been it's on, only, sorry, Bruce, go ahead. You've been on both sides of this. Um, do you think that these two teams bring out the best in each other, though? I think so. Um, I think, you know, when you go into Toronto and there's so many guys from Ontario, usually, um, or Canada, and, and, and it's Hockey Night in Canada, it's, it's something special. So you always get the best game when it's Hockey Night in Canada. That's one. And two, for us right now, we're chasing them. Um, you know, let's be honest, um, they're ahead of where we are in the development. Um, and they're on the cusp of trying to win right now. And we want to be that guy. And, uh, you know, we know what kind of players they have with Matthews and Marner and Nylander and Tavares. Um, we have some some good young players ourselves, and uh, we'll be ready when we play them tomorrow. But we're going to have to be ready to check because they can flat out score. Do you see an opportunity to, to sort of make a statement? It's only game two, but you guys made a lot of headlines. You're, that's where they're where you guys want to be. Yeah, for sure. And if you're going to beat them, you're going to have to defend. And one thing I don't think they get enough credit for is how well they defend. Um, you know, I don't know if that was to be said a few years ago, um, but you know, the, I, uh, they don't give you much, and uh, we're going to have to be willing to play that exact same way. And if and if you're willing to check and play that two-one mentality, I think we'll have a chance. You were part of the Leafs rivalry. I mean, you were part of the Leafs organization back when the rivalry was at its at its fiercest. What was that hockey like from afar, seeing those those series and those two teams go at it, and also what it meant for the province and the cities? Well, it was awesome. I was, I was uh, um, an extra back then anyways, and uh, it was uh, unbelievable to watch how good the players were, how much the people were involved. I remember we were at a restaurant I, uh, in Toronto somewhere as an extra, and we didn't go, and they were playing the national anthem before the game, and, and that's just that's, that's hockey in Canada, and it couldn't get any better, and I'd love to, we'd love nothing more than to get an opportunity to play them in a playoff series. Um, so I'm facing Matt tomorrow. <clears throat> um, did they announce him as he well, started? Well, that was they. Oh, okay. They announced it before <clears throat> be, uh, before the season started. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we just got to do what we do. I mean, we got scorers um, and we got guys that can put the puck in the net. Um, you know what? I, I think you know Matt. Unfortunately, here just was injured all the time, mm -hmm. and take nothing away from him. He just he was hurt all the time. He had a lot of bad luck, and you know I'm sure our guys you know are going to say hi and what have you. But once the game starts. You know, he's, he plays for the Maple Leafs, and, and Forsberg's our guy. Likely, I was just going to say, likely status quo for your lineup tomorrow. <clears throat> yeah, well, we may tinker. We'll see uh, what that looks like in the morning. Uh, guys are banged up and what have you. But, um, you know, pretty well everything's going to stay the same. Did you you coach the <clears throat> OHL final against one of the, in my estimation, one of the most talented OHL teams that ever 
played with McDavid and Dabrinkit and that and, and beat them at the time. Could you see something in that Erie team specifically in Dabrinkit where you said this kid's going to be successful moving forward? For sure. I, and I think one of the things he never got credit for is how well he passed the puck. And now seeing it up close, I mean, if you asked him yesterday, he'd probably give himself a three out of five. You know, he's a pretty humble kid. He had seven shots on goal. And any given night, his three out of five could be two goals. And, you know, you give him more than one or two looks, it goes in the back of the net. But one thing I don't think he's had given credit for is how well he moves the puck and how good his vision is. It's on his off his stick so, so quick. And that's why he's an elite scorer. And clearly he was that back then. I think he got 60 or whatever it was. So um, he scores everywhere he goes, and he's going to score here too. You um, just um, had a long chat there with uh, Thomas Shabbat at the end of the skate. There. Is that just... <clears throat> Just to see how things are going. I mean, Chavi's the anchor back there, you know, and um, <clears throat> just to see where he's at, um, you know, it, it, power play situations, five on three, four on three. Guys are getting different. You know, never experienced that. You know, <clears throat> it's part of being on a better team is that you're not always going to be the guy that goes, and, and he understands totally, and um, we understand that, and he understands that you know, he, when he's going real good, we're going real good. And... You know what, I thought he had a lot of really good offensive looks, and he's going to continue to get better, and we need him to be that solid guy, and we have the utmost confidence that he's going to be.